Welcome to Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we review Die Die Delta Pi. It's pledge week and all the girls of Delta Pi are just rushing to die. Directed by Sean Donahue and Christopher Lido, starring Crystal Pixie Adams and Andrea Alfonso, Die Die Delta Pi is about a house mother who's had enough and finally lays down the ultimate punishment. What do we like about this movie, guys? I really felt that this film had strong makeup work. The cuts, the burn marks, everything looked really realistic. The special effects were actually done by one of our favorite artists, which is Marcus Kosh, who you might have seen from Sweatshop, A Hundred Tears, and Bloody Bloody Bible Camp. This guy just knows how to work the blood, man. It's honestly one of the best we've seen, especially for the low budget. I mean, the kills looked amazing, the makeup, the gore. It, I. It came out of nowhere. I didn't expect it from this movie. And it was a pleasant surprise. I like that this movie was kind of being satirical in the sense that it started off in the 80s and they were using a bunch of 80s slang. They even used some like shitty color grade to try and make it look like it was an 80s movie. It was really rad. Totally. <laughs> I'm impressed with how much they pulled off. They had a huge cast. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people that were able to get killed with cool deaths. I mean, for a low budget film like this, they had cop cars, they had uniforms, they had, you know, different locations. You can see that their passion went into it. They knew what a slasher, like 80s film is, and they, they went for it, and that's very impressive. I felt that the characters were very colorful in this film. The friendships and the bonds that they had were overplayed, but they were entertaining when they were all together. Along the lines of characters, I thought that the girls looked gorgeous. We also got full frontal nudity from Roxy Vandiver, who we saw in Spirit Camp and Sweatshop. They nailed the gratuitous nudity. I mean, we had scenes of girls just like, okay, let's all get naked and sit here topless for like the next 10 minutes. It would have been really awkward on set, I feel. I guess maybe not to her, she didn't get Yeah, shit. some people are just free with their body. Not us, not we, us. we wear not multiple us. shirts. Oh, and only the same colors. <laughs> yes. Today, I'm wearing blue. Oh, well, I'm wearing blue. <laughs> well, blue really brings out my eyes. It brings out my eyes too. What didn't we like about this movie, guys? The biggest issue with this movie is the focus. This was shot completely autofocus, and it's very, very evident. It might be hard to see in these clips that I'm showing you, but every time that somebody was in a shot, you would see like it focus on someone close to the camera and then focus in the background and then come back. And it wasn't done manually. They weren't purposely doing that. It was autofocus and it looks like shit. And a lot of the time, including one of the cooler practical effects that they had, was completely out of focus. It seemed like a lot of the shots were one take. Many people fucked up their lines and they just kind of went with it. It's not like it was a decade ago. Yeah, all white people. <laughs> they actually have a lot of cool traditions and they kick you out if you don't get good grades. Yeah, fair enough. That is a cool tradition. It was the worst audio I've heard in a movie in a long time. It kept, you know, clipping in and out. We'd hear a lot of background noise. There was no background music to, you know, help elevate the mood or the emotions or anything. It was literally just the sound of a room while someone was standing in it. And quit calling me by my last name, you plick. Fine. From now on, your name is Houdini. For making your balls disappear. Shut up! Owen. I felt the story really fell flat. It was a boring story that could have had some potential. They built so many characters up and developed them to be interesting characters, but they didn't execute them. Owen, we learned that he was like this MMA fighter wrestler. He died just like that, without even a fight. Even the main characters who we watched for the first 20 minutes, they just kind of died off screen and instantly, and characters we didn't get to know survived. Not one character trait that was mentioned in the movie was used. Like we had one girl talk about how she's not afraid of certain things and how, oh, this she'll never be caught in these kind of situations, and she wasn't. They didn't even play off of the killer's backstories when they did the grand reveal. It was just like, these are the killers. Wow, we knew that. And now they're dead. Yeah, you know who the killers are right away because they show you the killers <laughs> pretty much at the beginning of the movie. And then you're like, okay, well, those are guys are going to be the killers. And they are the killers. One of the other things that sucks about it is that we're used to seeing, like, the final girl. Like, we're seeing that standoff. And in this one, they were building up to one of the previous sorority girls, her daughter being this protagonist. 
and she didn't even have a showdown with the killers at the end. She was just off screen the whole time. A good story, you know, it's like a, a roller coaster, right? You go up and down, right? You have these intense moments and then you just go back down and you're getting over it. But this was just like a driving through Kansas, planes on either side. Like a, like a <laughs> beeline straight to the end. It's like, hold on, if we can just get to the 120 minute mark, we'll have a feature film. <laughs> and that's exactly what it felt like. It's it, just a lot of girls talking about a lot of stuff I don't care about. It's time for our final thought and ratings. So this movie kind of started out pretty good. When we were back in the 80s, they were, you know, riffing on the slang and the attitudes and it, it seemed like it was going somewhere that was going to be fun, funny, and had, you know, a good homage to classic 80s slashers. But then it went downhill pretty fast. Then it got really boring. So boring that we said, man, this movie's boring. <laughs> That's true, right? I said that. You know, it had high hopes, but it really disappointed towards the end. I respect the fact that it was low budget, that the gore was amazing, and that you guys accomplished so much with so little, but even still, I just didn't enjoy it that much. So I'm gonna give it one and a half weird faced effigies out of five. I wasn't a big fan of this movie to be honest. I saw the title and I saw the trailer actually and I thought it was amazing. Unfortunately the movie itself was nothing like the trailer. It wasn't fast paced and it was just really boring. I really wanted to like this movie because it's exactly what we look for in movies based on the synopsis. <laughs> I will commend them because they did have some decent practical effects thanks to Marcus Kosh, but that's not gonna save it. The characters were all boring and we knew exactly who the killers were right away. So I'm gonna give this one bottle of voodoo vodka out of five. Yeah, this film, like most others that we see, has a really cool cover, has a really cool title, and it draws you right in with a really interesting synopsis. But then after we watch it, it's just not what we thought it was. It had a really flat story, really dull moments, and we didn't get to see a lot of kills. So that being said, I'm going to give this film one double ass paddling out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your favorite sorority massacre movie. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay updated with our reactions, reviews, and what would you do's. The what would you do for this will be coming up on Friday, so stay tuned.